the number one killer of both men and women in this country, heart disease. It's also obviously then the number one killer of celebrities. And what you're about to witness is actually a simulation of what you might see if someone were suffering from a heart attack. And this is a simulation, but ma'am, you look like you're not feeling very well. What's your name? Hi, um, my name's Tracy. Um, I'm feeling really, really weak. Can and you tell me what's going on? I'm having um, a lot of difficulty breathing. And um, I have this building pressure and tightness in my chest. And it's just progressively getting worse as I've been sitting here. At this point, if you're a layperson, this is the time where you call 911, get help on the way. Since I'm a physician, I'll proceed. I'm a physician, my name is Travis. Have you ever had any problems with your heart before? No. Have you ever felt this way before? No, this is the first time I've ever experienced anything of this magnitude, um, where I'm, I'm feeling really dizzy and like, uh, like this building nausea as well. That, yeah. How long have you been feeling this way? Um, probably the last 30 minutes that I've been sitting here has just intensified. And depending upon my situation as a physician, depending upon the environment that I'm in, but this even happens to me sometimes in the emergency department, a caretaker may not be a patient in the ER, but this is the time at which I would say, Tracy, we need to get you to a hospital. Tracy, you can come out of character for one moment. You did a good job. <laughs> you did a really good job. <laughs> but I want to highlight a, a couple of things. So when you look at Tracy, I, I as a trained physician can look at her and instantly I'm thinking she could be having a heart attack. Telltale signs, chest pressure, tightness, shortness of breath. I can see the sweat. You may be able to see that at home as well. That's when you get help on the way or you get them into a situation where seasoned veterans can take care of them. And, and in your case, Tracy, we would get you help. But sometimes you're gonna come upon a situation where someone like Tracy can't even tell you what's going on. They may be in the stages of a full-blown heart attack. They may have already lost consciousness. And joining us backstage right now is Bobby, an EMT, who's going to explain the compression. It's chest compression, it's hands-only CPR with the help of a volunteer. Thanks, Bobby. Hi, hey, Dr. Travis. When it comes to hands-only CPR, when you see an adult or a teenager that has just fallen to the ground, the best thing to do is call 911 immediately, get your hands on the chest, and keep compressing until 911 shows up or the person starts moving. Who in this audience doesn't think that they would be capable of doing what you're seeing our volunteer do right there? It's okay, you can raise your hand. And a few people, and that's okay. But for the majority of people who look at that and think, you know what, if the time were to come, I could do that. What we found is that with, with hands only chest compression, where there's no rescue breathing, you're trying to give them compressions at about 100 compressions per minute. And all you're trying to do is keep blood flowing until help arrives. And we've learned that your blood does not deoxygenate so very quickly that the compressions don't do their job because if you can just do that for five, six minutes while help is on the way, what you're doing is you're sending oxygen to that person's brain. That's why if you do chest compression only CPR, if the patient survives, they are much more likely to have intact brain functioning and that's of course the main goal in all of this. Not just survival, but intact survival. Thank you so much, Bobby. No problem.